Hi, my name is Craig Lurie, and I'm the CTO and co-founder of Keeper Security. Today I'll do a demo of the Keeper platform. Let's first talk about security. Keeper is a zero-knowledge platform, which means that all of the encryption and decryption of data takes place locally on the user's device. When you sign up for Keeper, you can select which data center you want your tenant and your encrypted ciphertext to be hosted. We have completely isolated data centers around the world, all of our regions are fully redundant and hosted with Amazon AWS. We have primary regions available in the U.S. commercial region, U.S. GovCloud region, Europe, Australia, Japan, and Canada. Keeper uses FIPS 140-2 validated encryption modules. In the U.S. GovCloud region, we're FedRAMP authorized and ITAR compliant. Keeper implements a multi-layered encryption system based on client-side generated keys. Record level keys and folder level keys encrypt each stored vault record and folder. For example, if you have 10,000 records in your vault, you also have 10,256-bit AES record keys protecting the data. Keys are generated locally on the device to preserve zero knowledge and to support advanced features such as record sharing and folder sharing. Record and folder keys are wrapped by other keys such as the data key and client key. For users who log in with a master password, a master password key is derived using PBKDF2 and used to unwrap the data key, which is then used to unwrap the record keys and folder keys. Record keys are then used to decrypt the stored record information in the vault. All fields of the data in each record are encrypted, including file attachments. Users can also log in with biometrics. In that case, we generate what's called a biometric key, which is used to unwrap the ciphertext locally on the device after a successful authentication with Face ID, Touch ID, Windows Hello, Android Biometrics, or any other supported method. Keeper also has an advanced device verification system, which ensures that you must be on an approved device before even attempting to log in. A device can be approved many different ways, including using Keeper push or email. Our device verification system prevents brute force attacks and enumeration attacks, while our transmission key encryption on top of TLS protects against man-in-the-middle attacks. For enterprise users who log into Keeper with single sign-on like Azure, Okta, Ping, or Google Workspace, an elliptic curve public-private key pair is generated locally on the device. The private key stays with the device, and the public key is stored in the cloud. After the user authenticates with the identity provider, such as Azure, the IDP sends a signed SAML assertion back to Keeper. Once we verify the assertion, we then deliver what's called the device encrypted data key to the user. The user then decrypts their data key using the device elliptic curve private key. Once they have their data key, they're able to decrypt their vault ciphertext and then decrypt their folder keys and record keys and ultimately decrypt their record contents. If the device is unrecognized, the user must go through what we call a device approval process, which is essentially a key exchange. A device approval can be performed by the user on their own devices or by a Keeper administrator, or it can be automated with a service we call the Keeper Automator Service. The Automator Service can be hosted by the customer in any cloud or on-prem environment. The whole point of this is you can deploy Keeper to thousands of users through your existing identity provider, and the whole experience is totally seamless for the end user while preserving zero knowledge. Let's go through the end user experience first, and then we'll go through the Keeper admin console. When you deploy Keeper to your users, you have the choice of pushing out the Keeper web vault, browser extension, we call that Keeper fill, and the Keeper desktop app for Windows, Mac, or Linux. They work together and they can also work independently. The Keeper desktop app has some additional features over the web vault. For example, you can log in with a biometric. In this case, I'm on a Mac and I'm logging in with Touch ID. The desktop app has some special capabilities for filling passwords in native apps such as Zoom and Microsoft Teams. Keeper Fill for Apps is this widget which is available to you anytime from the toolbar area of your device and you can use it to quickly look up any data in your vault and fill passwords with a hotkey or keystroke sequence. Back to the web vault, I'll go ahead and log in to an account using Microsoft Azure as my identity provider. You just type in your email from the front door of Keeper and then click Next. In my case, I'm logging into my account using a hardware YubiKey device. After a successful login, the signed SAML assertion is sent back and we then decrypt the vault locally on the device using the elliptic curve private key. So as you can see, it's super easy for users to log into their vault with any identity provider. Once I'm in the vault, you can see we have the ability to manage data in private folders and shared folders. Private folders are private to me, and shared folders can be shared among a team or other individual users. Here in this shared folder called Amazon AWS, I've got it broken down into three subfolders. On the right side, you can see the users who have access. 
There are two teams, the AWS team and the Secrets Managers team. There's also a few individual users assigned. Teams and users can be granted access to add and remove users or to add and remove records. These teams can automatically be assigned through your identity provider or through SKIM integration or using our Active Directory bridge. Teams can also be created manually in the admin console. This other tab called Applications will show up if you use Keeper Secrets Manager, and this allows you to assign third-party applications with access to your shared folder. In this case, I have the folder connected to Ansible and to Azure DevOps. The Records tab is where you assign record permissions to everyone in the shared folder. Records can be assigned view only, can edit, and can share rights. The same record can also appear in multiple shared folders with different access rights. So, you've got your humans with access to manage records in the vault, and you've got your third-party apps with access for your CI-CD pipelines and DevOps tools. The way sharing works is it takes the 256-bit AES key protecting this folder and encrypts it with the elliptic curve public key of the team or assigned user. Then, the recipient is able to log into their vault and decrypt the folder with their elliptic curve private key. You can also share information in your vault at the record level. Take, for example, this CrowdStrike record. If I wanted to share this with another user, I can just click on Options, Sharing, and then type in the user who it should be shared to. In the case of record level sharing, the AES-256 record key is encrypted with the public key of the recipient. Keeper also supports one-time sharing, which is a new method of sharing a record to a contractor or vendor who doesn't have a Keeper account. A one-time share can be created by clicking on Options, One-Time Share, and then specify how long the share will be available for. A share link can be provided to the recipient through a hyperlink or through a QR code. When the recipient opens the one-time share link, it becomes cryptographically bound to the user's device and remains available on the device for the time period specified. Note that all of the sharing functionality can be controlled by the Keeper administrator, and you can decide which roles in the organization are allowed to share or not allowed to share records. I'll show how this is managed in the Keeper admin console. Okay, of course, one of the key features of the Keeper platform is managing passwords and autofilling credentials in websites and apps. So to demonstrate this, I'll use a GitHub account. Launching the record from the vault will open the GitHub site, autofill the login, password, and then the two-factor authentication code automatically. The Keeper browser extension has a ton of capabilities, including filling, saving, updating, and managing your passwords on any website. The Keeper Fill browser extension is available for every web browser, including Chrome, Edge, Firefox, Brave, Safari, and you can push it out to your users through group policy, or users can install it themselves through our onboarding process. This works the same way with mobile devices as well. On iOS and Android, Keeper has full feature parity and supports managing all of your records, permissions, and autofilling passwords into native apps and websites. Here I'll log into the same GitHub account using the Keeper Fill integration on my iPhone. Just tap on passwords above the keyboard and Keeper will autofill the login, password, and then copy the 2FA code to the clipboard. Loading passwords into Keeper is super easy. Our Web Vault and Desktop app provide an automatic import method which pulls in your passwords across all your browsers like Chrome, Edge, Internet Explorer, Safari, Firefox, including iCloud Keychain. We also support an automatic import from many other password managers, such as LastPass or 1Password. We've also got an advanced import capability, which supports either CSV or JSON format. Keeper supports many different built-in record types, such as logins, servers, databases, and many other types of content. You can customize which record types are available to the user through role-based enforcement policies. You can also create fully custom record types. For example, this employee HR record or this high security login record type. You can customize which fields are part of the template, which ones are required, and you can even set password complexity and privacy screen password hiding rules at the template level. Our record types feature is very flexible and can be managed through role policies. You can drag and drop files into records and they are encrypted locally with 256-bit AES just like the password data. Files can then be shared securely with elliptic curve encryption from vault to vault. Records have full revision history back to the beginning of time, so you can always revert back to a prior version if needed. 
The security audit screen gives you insight into the password strength and password reuse that's taking place in your vault. The BreachWatch screen tracks which passwords in the vault have been found in dark web data breaches. You're notified directly in your vault if a password has appeared on a public data breach, and you're directed to take action and rotate the password. BreachWatch is a really crucial feature because it'll help you protect against account takeover or password spraying attacks on your accounts. Let me quickly describe how BreachWatch works. Keeper pulls in the dark web breach data for billions of passwords. We hash them twice in our infrastructure using HMAC 512. The second time we hash them, we use a hardware security module with a non-exportable key. The hashes are then stored in our BreachWatch infrastructure. On the vault side, the passwords are also processed through HMAC 512 and then through an anonymizer to disconnect the individual user with the hash. And again, we hash it with HMAC 512 with the hardware security module using a non-exportable key. We then compare the hashes and generate alerts to the user on their device. Alerts can be sent to the Keeper administrators through our advanced reporting and alerts module, which we'll cover in the next section of the demo. One of the benefits of the Keeper platform is that we provide free Keeper family plan accounts to the business end users. Just go to the account screen and type in your personal email address to receive a complimentary account for up to five family members with unlimited devices. The family account is not subject to enforcement policies by the Keeper admin, and the family account goes with the user when they leave the organization. The administrator does not have any controls over the family account. The free family account is just like many of the features here in the vault, and it's totally optional. It's something you can decide whether or not to provide to your employees. Let's move to the Keeper Admin Console. The Admin Console is where you provision and manage your Keeper users, set up your role-based enforcement policies, manage teams, and run reports. You can log into the Admin Console either through SSO or with a master password. In this case, I'll log in with an admin account that has a master password and a hardware-based YubiKey device for 2FA. The admin section is where you manage the onboarding and offboarding of users. At Keeper, we have this powerful node architecture. A node is like an organizational unit, and it can hold users, roles, teams, 2FA methods, and provisioning methods. Within a node, you can designate a different identity source, such as Active Directory, Azure AD, Okta, Ping, or any other identity provider. Here in this node I called Azure AD Cloud Plus Duo, and I've got users who are provisioned directly through Microsoft Azure. Users can be active or in a locked state. The Roles tab is where I can control the role-based enforcement policies. A role can either be an admin role or a regular user role. For example, this role called Azure Admin has the rights to manage users within this node. Here's a list of the administrative permissions available to the users in this role. A role is made up of enforcement policies, which control what users can do in their vault, how they access their vault, and what capabilities are enforced. For example, I have this role called General Azure User, and it's the default role in this node. In the enforcement policies, I can control things like master password complexity rules, enforcement of two-factor authentication, which platforms are available, what features are turned on and off within the end-user vault, generated password complexity rules, and data retention policies. You can also control what record types are available to users in the role, and you can control what sharing capabilities they have. For example, you can control if records can be shared outside of the enterprise or turned off completely. You can also control the use of one-time sharing, as well as restricting the ability for users to import and export data. The Keeper Fill enforcement policies give you control over the behavior and functionality of the Keeper browser extension. The account settings control offline access restrictions and security policies around how often users have to log in, can they stay logged in between browser and computer restarts, and you can even control access to the vault through IP allow list rules. The use of Keeper Secrets Manager is controlled at the role policy level as well, in addition to our transfer account policy, which gives designated administrators the ability to transfer the contents of a vault from one user to another user in the case of an employee unexpectedly leaving or a termination. Teams are specifically created for sharing records in the vault. A team can be automatically provisioned from your identity provider via SKIM or through our Active Directory Bridge Connector. Teams can also be created manually here in the console by clicking on Add Team. Teams can also be linked to roles. 
Teams also have the ability to have restrictions placed on them. For example, the team can have privacy screen activated for any shared folders that they've been granted access to. Provisioning methods can be applied at the node level. Provisioning methods include our SSO Connect Cloud capability, SSO Connect On-Prem, Active Directory Sync, SKIM, Email Provisioning, and Command Line Provisioning. This node has SSO Cloud activated, and you can see the SAML configuration is managed right here in the user interface. This node has just-in-time provisioning enabled, which means that the first time the user accesses Keeper, their account is instantly provisioned. Keeper also supports skim provisioning, which is what Azure calls automated provisioning. Skim will automatically synchronize users and teams from your identity provider to Keeper. This also includes locking accounts when the user has been deactivated from your IDP. Setting up SSO and skim with Keeper is super easy. It only takes a few minutes to set up. We have out-of-the-box integrations with all of the major identity providers. For our managed service providers using Keeper MSP, there's another screen here called Managed Companies. This is where the MSP can roll out Keeper to their clients and control all of the licensing for their managed companies. Keeper provides a consumption-based billing model, which allows the MSP to scale to any number of managed companies with monthly billing based on the overall usage. Managed companies can be controlled fully by the MSP, or they can have their own administrators within each tenant. Managed companies can have their own node structure, provisioning methods, role policies, and teams. The security audit screen provides a high-level view of password strength and reused passwords across the employees. The summary data is encrypted by the vault with the enterprise public key and then decrypted here in the admin console to preserve zero knowledge. Keeper's compliance reporting capability supports audits for PCI, HIPAA, Sarbanes-Oxley, and other regulations that require access control monitoring and event auditing. Keeper Compliance Reports provides designated Keeper administrators with the ability to analyze the contents of the end-user vaults without disclosing secrets. On the end-user vault, Keeper encrypts the record title, website address, and record type with the enterprise public key. Then on the console, the auditor can decrypt the information. For example, I have a report called Cloud Infrastructure Accounts, which looks for specific keywords in the record title like Azure and AWS. You can click on a user and then look at which records exist in the user's vault that match that criteria. You can then look at who has been granted access to the record and what level of permission. You can see how they gained access and the record ownership. Compliance reports can be exported in PDF format and rerun repeatedly with the same criteria over time. BreachWatch summary data is aggregated by the end user vaults and then made available to the Keeper admin. This shows you how many records in the user's vaults are flagged as breached passwords, how many have passed the scan, and how many were ignored. If a record is flagged by BreachWatch, it means that the password has shown up in a dark web data breach and puts the record at risk of account takeover. The Keeper Advanced Reporting and Alerts module provides admins with a full reporting engine that can track over 150 different event types. All password-related activity is tracked, broken down by category, and includes metadata around the location, IP address, application version, and other important details. Security events, login events, failed logins, sharing events, policy changes, breached password notifications, and any other type of action taken within the platform is monitored here. You can run reports directly in the console, or you can ship the events directly to any third-party SIM solution, such as Splunk, Sumo, Azure Sentinel, Datadog, Syslog, and any other destination. These are direct pushes from the Keeper cloud, so the events are streamed in real time, and we provide instructions on how to integrate, including whitelisting our IPs. You can also generate real-time alerts directly in the console. Alerts can be created based on any event type. So for example, I have an alert here generated anytime that this AWS root login record is filled opened, deleted, or updated. Alert recipients can either be an email, SMS number, or a webhook directly into Microsoft Teams, Slack, or any other workflow tool. Secrets sprawl is a growing concern for DevOps and engineering teams. Keeper Secrets Manager is a fully managed, cloud-based, zero-knowledge platform for securing infrastructure secrets such as API keys, database passwords, access keys, certificates, and any other type of confidential data. With Keeper Secrets Manager, you can remove credentials from source code and configuration files and pull secrets directly from the vault. 
Keeper Secrets Manager removes hard-coded credentials from popular CI-CD platforms and orchestration tools such as Ansible, Bitbucket, GitHub Actions, Jenkins, GitLab. We integrate with containerization tools like Docker and Kubernetes. We also integrate into DevOps tools such as Terraform. Keeper Secrets Manager can also push secrets into Azure Key Vault and AWS Secrets Manager. We provide SDKs in every major programming language such as Python, Java, JavaScript, .NET, Go, and PowerShell. Secrets Manager is integrated into the vault so you can share folders and records to specific applications. So for example, this folder called Development Secrets is shared to several applications and scripts. As an example, I'll demonstrate how to connect a folder to the Keeper Secrets Manager command line interface for accessing your vault from the terminal. You first create the application, select the folder to access, and then assign record permissions. You can also lock the external IP address to the machine which first performs the request. The one-time access token is generated, which is an encryption key used to set up the target machine. From here, I'll initialize the endpoint. And now this device is locked into the Secrets Manager. All requests to the Keeper Cloud are fully encrypted, and all of the ciphertext is always decrypted locally on the device. Now I can use this command line interface to access secrets. KSM secret list will display all of the available secrets to me, and KSM secret get can retrieve the record details for a specific record UID. Keeper Commander is our command line CLI and automation platform, which serves many different purposes. For power users, Commander offers the ability to automate any action in the Keeper platform. You can log into Commander using either SSO or a master password. From here, you can automate any function of the platform, which includes managing users, teams, role policies, nodes, running compliance reports, analyzing audit events, approving devices, and hundreds of other features. Commander is an open source Python SDK, and we also have a PowerShell module and a .NET SDK for customers to use. Our Commander team moves quickly to help solve any requests from customers. For example, if you're looking for a custom report or you need help automating some process, we'll either do it for you or we'll point you in the right direction. This is just one of the services we provide to business customers to help integrate Keeper into your workflow. Keeper Connection Manager protects access to infrastructure such as Windows desktops, Linux terminals, databases, and other protocols all through a web browser. Keeper Connection Manager supports privileged sessions, which means that the user connecting to the target system is never exposed to the actual credentials. The password or the SSH key used to manage the connection is protected in the Keeper vault. For example, here's a Windows server that's set up as a privileged session. I can also connect to a Linux machine through the terminal interface. As you can see, the session is very responsive and it feels extremely native. Here's an example of connecting to a MySQL database. We also support Postgres and SQL Server. Sessions can even be multiplexed in the same browser window. And sessions can be recorded and audited by the admin. You can play back sessions directly in the browser interface. Keeper Connection Manager integrates with the vault. Here in my vault, I have this folder called Connection Manager Secrets. The users who can manage the records are part of the Secrets Manager team. And on the Application tab, you can see that I have the Connection Manager application assigned. The benefit of Keeper Connection Manager is that you can deploy it as a Docker container to any environment and it's agentless, so it uses native protocols to the target systems. It's also clientless, which means you don't have to have any special software installed to run it, just a regular web browser. Keeper Connection Manager has many other features, including machine discovery, SSO integration, dynamic user and group assignments, and other advanced capabilities. 
Okay, that wraps up our demo of the Keeper platform. One of the things we get asked a lot about is our product roadmap. We publish monthly updates across all our platforms, and we launch major new features every few months. Our product management, engineering, and design teams work very closely with our customers to review requirements, wireframes, technical features, and we make sure that we are addressing exactly what our customers need and solving the problems that they face. Thank you for watching the demo, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at feedback at keepersecurity.com. Thank you.